good afternoon from the Second Age of Reason. We're here to talk about the deafening cognitive dissonance. I've just seen some recently, and I think it's one of the main things we are combating in the way we run our society and the way we run our politics these days. My neighbor is a Republican, and um, he puts the signs out when elections come like crazy, and so you know he's really into it. And so the other day he comes by me and he says, Obama will take care of you. Obama will take care of you. <laughs> With that nice little sinister laugh. And um, he's an elderly gentleman. And he said something to the effect that, well, you know, another year and no social security raise. There's inflation and no raise from Obama. What good is he? The last raise we got was from George Bush. At least he cared. Well, George Bush had a Democrat Congress and Obama has a Republican Congress from when the financial things come from, so I think he's a little bit cognitively dissonant, not getting it. Oh, no, Social Security raises. Oh, woe is me. Well, at my age, I'm looking at some of the proposals I see, and I see that there's nothing in the future for me. He's even worse than him. I said, I don't know. I voted for Ralph Nader. And then he said, Oh, yeah, Ralph Nader, he's a good guy. Something doesn't add up there. Why didn't he vote for Ralph Nader? But he didn't. And so we go on with a little conversation. No raise for Social Security. And I said, and they're going to come after, you know, Medicare next. So instead of worrying about Obama, who is our representative in Congress? In my district, Paul Ryan. He's your Paul Ryan, too, neighbor. Paul Ryan has his eyes on your money, on your Social Security, on your Medicare. Paul Ryan doesn't understand about Section 8 of the Constitution, where Congress has the ability to coin money and set the value thereof. They have no need to borrow in this deficit. It's just a great robbery. It's a great fiasco. So that banks can have a guaranteed money flow. Banks are one thing. And the Federal Reserve. Because the, the implied you might have to pay it back. Then they're borrowing money from nations. Why are they doing it? They don't have to. Cognitive dissonance is in Congress as well. They don't get it. The President doesn't get it. The Congress doesn't get it. They don't. None of them get it. They can just publish issue the money. They worry about inflation, but they don't issue so much. That's easy, isn't it? They keep talking about the entitlements. Entitlements. I pay for entitlements, so I expect a return on investment. Entitlements. Hey, not a word is spoken about military industrial entitlements. Not a word is spoken about, about the bankers' entitlements and the bailout. We have a short time until 2012 when we can try and bring harmony to the ideas so that people understand what's going on. In one sense, they'll probably not want to vote because they figure, what's the use? But in the other sense, it, maybe it's time for some other parties to get involved. The Democrat, Republicans, I don't know if you know this, but they're basically the same, except they're different clubs that don't get along well. So, cognitive dissonance the thing that we have to combat in the next year or two before the elections. So, something to keep in mind, because we, some of us have seen that you can blame Obama all you want, but Paul Ryan is out there looking for your retirement, for your pensions, for your Medicare. And he will give you a couple of coupons and say, that should be good enough. It's healthy.